Once it hits your nose, you know that, okay, that's a good morning to start. The moment I drink it, I feel satisfied. I can't do without it. These people love their cup of joe, just like me. But not just any cuppa. I'm talking about instant coffee. You know, those instant three-in-one sachets that you open up to start your day. This is something you asked us to look into when my co-host Stephen Chia crowdsourced for story ideas a couple of months ago. You ask and we'll answer. In this episode, I'll be brewing up a storm to find out what's in our three-in-one sachets and if we really should be drinking them. The invention of three-in-one coffee dates way back to 1976 when Korean food brand Dongse Foods came up with the first ever coffee, sugar and powdered cream mix sticks. It was only in the late 1980s that homegrown company Super created their own three-in-one coffee and that it became available in Singapore. Since then, instant coffee, which includes our much-loved three-in-one, has become a household staple growing from just one brand to over 30 to choose from, raking in 82% of the revenue generated from all types of coffee beverages in Singapore. To make a fresh cup of coffee, you need coffee beans, a coffee maker, maybe even a grinder, sugar, milk. But with a three-in-one, all the heavy lifting is done for you. All you need is hot water. And there you have it, a steaming hot aromatic coffee. But how do you turn coffee beans into powdered mix. I'm at homegrown coffee brand Killini. Nope, not one of their cafes that we're so familiar with, but a location I have been given special access to. Their instant coffee factory. This is where they've been creating their three-in-one mixes since 2020. Well, how is three-in-one coffee made? For three-in-one, one of the most uh, important ingredient is the spread dried coffee. Yeah, and you can take a look here. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow, this is not what I expect. I, I thought coffee powder would normally be like rough and granular, but this is so fine. In the spray drying process, liquid coffee is reduced into a concentrate and is sprayed into a stream of hot air. And as the droplets fall, they dry and become fine coffee powder. So how this is different from the usual coffee beans is that this becomes soluble, where you add hot water and it dissolves. So does the spray drying process affect the flavour of the coffee? If you purchase good quality spray dried coffee, it does help to contain or keep the strong aroma, which you can taste it at the end product. Okay, but this is just the coffee part, right? And there's also sugar and creamer in a three-in-one, so how is that introduced? This brings us to the next part, where I'll show you the blending process. This is called a ribbon blender. So it will mix all the different ingredients, including the creamer, the coffee, sugar, etc. So we blend this for about 20 minutes after the mixing. Uh, you will send the ingredients through a auger or a feeder system up to here. And then uh, you will do the sachet packing. So after the sachets are done, you will be sent up to this feeder, conveyor belt, where you will count 15 sachets and then pack it into a final pack. Why don't I make you a cup of coffee now, Ray? That'd be great. I need a coffee, man. Killini for a long time is known for its freshly brewed coffee, right? So why go into 3-in-1 coffee? We realise that customers want consistency in every cup of the coffee they order. And in the shop, sometimes, unfortunately, you know, it depends on the mood of the, the coffee brewer and the brewmaster. And then you get different varying qualities out there. So having a 3-in-1 version of our you know, coffee, it does ensure that every cup or every sachet of our coffee is consistent and of good quality. How do you ensure that the three-in-one version matches up to the freshly brewed one? In the coffee shop, our beans are a blend of Arabica and Robusta coffee. So when we do a three-in-one series, we also select the spread dried coffee that consists of the two types of coffee beans so that we match the taste and aroma of the coffee. So I was curious about something, right? So the shelf life of these, this is until about 2023. That's about two years. How does it keep for so long? The ingredients are all in powdered form. So being in powdered form, the shelf life is naturally uh, longer than uh, in other forms. A three-in-one might be able to last years, 
but will it lose its caffeine over time? I want to know how the caffeine levels in our three-in-ones stack up against other types of coffee. So I'm sending them all for a test. Hi I'm pitting three-in-ones against other types of instant coffee. Those that are black, without added sugar or creamer, bottled specialty coffee from cafes, and commercial coffee from a can or bottle. The composition is different, so the caffeine result might be varies. I chose these because they are all relatively convenient or fuss-free. But would my three-in-one trump them in terms of caffeine power? It's hard to rival the goodness of three-in-ones. They are convenient and quick, last for as long as two years, and are 20 times cheaper. So you can drink them without breaking the bank. I can see that for things like Kopi O, the ingredients are quite familiar to me, right? They are things like coffee, sugar, salt. But for the three-in-ones, now here's where I'm a little concerned because there are all these things that I've never heard of. For example, maltodextrin, sodium carbonate, and also even things with numbers like INS471, INS472E. What are these really? I'm consolidating the top few common chemicals that I've spotted across all these labels and bringing them to food scientist Ramesh Krish Kumar who specializes in the development and nutrition research of beverages. Ramesh, so the first one that I found was emulsifiers. What are these emulsifiers? What emulsifiers basically do is that they prevent the separation of fat or oil from a water system. Coffees, naturally being beans, they do have uh, fat content in them. And milk definitely has fat in them. So with time, we always see a layer of fat going up. That's because oil and water, they separate. So this one has emulsifier in them. Okay. So that's why you don't see any form of separation. And it will remain like that for even a year. So the next ones I found were stabilizers. I will show you another type of coffee. This looks like something that you picked up from, you know, just dug in the sand in a swamp or a beach or something and just threw it in water. <laughs> it looks gross. You see three distinctive layers, right? Yeah. We have the water layer on the top and of course the milk protein layer in the middle and these are the coffee grounds actually. So what the stabilizer actually does is stabilizer prevents different sedimentations from happening. It is actually used to stabilize the entire coffee so that you don't see distinctive separations I see, okay. Next one that I was a bit dumbfounded by was anti-caking agent. Now, there's no cakes here. So what does an anti-caking agent do? Coffee tend to actually absorb moisture from the environment. This anti-caking agent, they will compete with the other ingredients and absorb the moisture, preventing them from lumping up. That's why you have a very nice flowing powder over here. Okay, um, how about this one, sodium caseinate. Its main function is actually to allow dispersion. So, one of the most important things for a three-in-one is when you pour it to hot water or water, can you imagine it lumps up and forms a ball oh. and it doesn't dissolve? Okay. So that is a very undesirable thing. And finally, maltodextrin. One of its main functions is a bulking agent. If you open and you pour, just a, a small amount of powder comes up. It's not fulfilling, it's not a very nice effect. So you want to bulk it up, right? Give it more volume, give it more weighted. So to give it that volume or that bulk, they will add in maltodextrin. But is having all this in my coffee, is it going to affect me in any way health-wise in the long term? So all these ingredients are very highly regulated. Because the amount used is such a small quantity, they do not have any ill effect or, or any negative harmful effect on the human health itself. One of the biggest concerns for 3-in-1 coffees or instant coffees would be the sugar content and the fat content. They tend to use creamers, and creamers are very high in hydrogenated fat. The reason why they hydrogenate the, the fat is because they want to make it stable so that it doesn't taste rancid, right? And, but the hydrogenation process, it is a chemical process, it will actually make the fat unhealthier. So is it possible to find any three-in-ones without hydrogenated fats? 
Uh, that is going to be very challenging because from what I have seen there, most 3-in-1 coffees add hydrogenated fat. But there's an increasing trend whereby there are healthier creamers being used, low-fat creamers being used, even non-fat creamers being used in the coffee. So it is possible. There are many options coming up in, in recent years. So I'm sure you can definitely find one or two in, in the market for sure. The good news is that there are now plenty of healthier instant coffee mixes to choose from. Those with the Singapore Health Promotion Board symbols are at least 25% lower in sugar. Some can go up to 50%. But Ramesh's advice is to still check the nutritional label. Some products that says no cane sugar, yeah. no table sugar, for example. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean they don't use any type. They can use glucose, they can use fructose, they can use many other types of sugar, which also provides calories as well. So one of the best things to do is actually, you know, you have kopi or kosong and use your own milk and sugar alternatives. You can go for fat-free skim milk, low-fat milk. If you are very concerned about your calorie intake but you have a sweet tooth like myself, you can go for a natural intense sweetener like stevia for example. Mm. It sweetens the coffee to a certain degree. So you can make a perfect cup of healthy coffee. So I can still enjoy my coffee without all the extra things that I don't know about. That's right. <laughs> okay. So for a healthy cup of coffee, I should use instant black coffee and add my own sugar and milk. But how do I make not just a healthy cup but a perfect one? This is a challenge I'm posing to barrister Matthew Poe, and we're using these instant black coffee sachets. Maybe for a start, you show me how you make your own coffee first? Okay, great. So I normally just pop it in the glass, right? Okay. I get my boiling water and pour it in. Uh, and I... fill it up, cover the bag, make sure it's well diluted or let the coffee come out. Might give it a bit of a stir. And that's it. I have, I've got my copio. I probably have one suggestion or two that can make that taste slightly better. Every time you open that bag and take out this, preferably use it within five minutes because every time it's exposed to air, oxidization happens and it basically it emits out all the flavors. So capture as much as the flavor you can by uh, brewing it immediately. So what we have here is uh, hot water but not 100 degrees. This is brought down to about like 70 or 80 degrees. Mm. So at home, the best way to figure that out is once you see a little bubbles coming up, you can turn it off in the heat exchange. The hotter the water, the more caffeine it extracts. Mm -hmm. The more caffeine it extracts means it's usually more bitter. Lower temperature brings out the sweeter notes. When I pour, I actually go slow. How slow would that be? By the time I am done, it's probably it's 30 seconds. The flavours comes out from a slow pour. So is there a appropriate timing to remove the bag? Take it out straight away for a better flavour, or I can keep it in for two minutes, three minutes for a stronger coffee. I've got to admit, I still have my reservations on whether these simple steps will improve the flavour of my instant black coffee. So it's time for a taste test. I'll first taste the cup I brewed. Yep, tastes like the standard kopio, as bitter as it gets. <laughs> Just have some water to cleanse the palate first. Now I'm going on to the glass that was poured by Matthew. Wow. I, I am actually genuinely shocked because it tastes very different from what I poured. It's, it's a lot less bitter. I can taste a bit of the, the citrus notes. Wow, it's a lot lighter and easier to drink. So there is a newer version of it, uh, which actually uh, helps everybody to sort of make a better pour. This is a drip bag. It looks exactly like earlier on that Kopio Kosong bag, mm -hmm. but the difference is there is a pair of wings here. Each drip bag goes for $160 on average. And the prep work is equally hassle-free. All you have to do is tear off its top, hook the handles over your cup and pour hot water over the grounds. We have the coffee grinds set further up from the uh, cup itself. 
this actually slows down the pour. It gives you a slightly better flavour than you would if you just leave the bag in there. This is just a normal black coffee, um, but what if I want sugar and milk in it? Are there any tips for that? For black coffee, actually if you do say for instance a 5 gram, half a spoon of uh, sugar in it, it actually brings out a lot more flavour. Anything more, the sugar will overpower whatever the intrinsic sort of taste and notes there is in the coffee itself. So is there any particular kind of sugar that we should use? I would recommend brown and refined sugar. How about adding milk? Do not drink it with uh, cold milk. My recommendation is just pour it with uh, hot milk because uh, hot milk at 60 odd degrees is actually sweeter uh, than cold milk. And without a very drastic temperature drop, um, you enjoy a better coffee. I'd take a healthy, tasty cup of coffee any day. But there's something I'm more particular about in my morning fix. It's caffeine levels. I'm about to find out exactly how much caffeine there is in my 3-in-1. Make any pose you like. Pose. Okay, here we go. It's been two weeks since I sent 27 different instant coffees to test for their caffeine levels. I'm pitting the three-in-one against these other categories of instant coffee. The results are finally out. And I'm going to show you how much caffeine is in each type of instant coffee. On average, three-in-ones have 60.9 milligrams of caffeine per 100 milliliters. That's higher than the caffeine levels in both instant black coffee and canned and bottled commercial coffee. But the one with the most caffeine is our ready-to-drink specialty coffee. The kind you can buy from cafes with over 95 milligrams of caffeine per 100 milliliters. That's over 55% more as compared to 3-in-1 coffee. To help me make sense of the data is barrister trainer Zan Tai. What I found out was the ready-to-drink specialty coffee has got so much more caffeine than the other varieties. Now, why is that? How we brew specialty coffee, we will use 100% coffee beans to maybe extract an espresso shot. And we may pair it with, let's say, milk to make it into bottle form mm -hmm. as a ready-to-drink um, beverage. So for the three others, the instant coffee is a bit different from specialty coffee. What really goes into the coffee blend, coffee base, may not be 100% coffee. Oh, so it's, it's mixed with other things? Yes, things like your, your fillers, basically, mm -hmm. like your corn, your chickpeas. Because this is how we traditionally consume our local coffee okay. because of cost. The tradition is being passed down even till today. So after they have the coffee blend, we may pair it with other milk products like creamer, milk products, to make into your 3-in-1. And of course, those fillers do not contribute any caffeine to your coffee brood. But, you know, in three-in-ones, there's coffee, but there's also a lot of additives. But in instant black coffee, it's primarily coffee, but I don't understand why it's got a lower caffeine level than a three-in-one. Caffeine can also depend on how much coffee is being used. If you are making your coffee, you're making a black coffee and you're making a milk coffee. Yeah. Which one do you think you will add in more coffee to get enough coffee taste? Definitely the milk will affect the taste, so I'll add more coffee to the, the one with the milk. There you get it. You could probably have a lot more coffee in your 3-in-1 milk coffee as compared to your black, so that the coffee taste will not be so masked by all the other products that you have inside. We all know that caffeine is a stimulant. It makes us feel more awake. And with a higher level of caffeine in our 3-in-1s as compared to instant black coffee and canned or bottled commercial coffee, can we have too much of a good thing? This Kylie come to the centre and make whatever funky pose you like. Pose. OK, here we go. This is nutritionist Chan Joy Singh, and he has captured a shot of my shadow. After you drink a cup of coffee or any beverages with caffeine, the coffee starts to go down to your stomach and later on to your small intestine. 
At the small intestine, that's where different compounds, including caffeine, will pass through the intestinal cells wall and enter the blood circulation and it goes to your brain. And within about 20 minutes, you get to feel different sensations, including an increase in alert mind and also able to focus better and also positive moods. So how much caffeine is too much? Up to 400 milligrams is actually shown to be safe for consumption a day. That works out to less than four cups of my three-in-one. Too much caffeine can be overstimulating. Imagine muscles that are being prepped for sudden exertion, but with nowhere to go. That causes the all-familiar caffeine jitters. The sudden increase in blood flow and heart contractions can even lead to palpitations. Caffeine can also constrict the blood vessels in the brain. And when caffeine intake stops, the blood vessels dilate, increasing the blood flow, which is why sometimes we get a headache after a caffeine crash. There's actually some health benefits relating for drinking coffee. Athletes who actually consume coffee will also boost their endurance and performance, and also it helps to increase our metabolism slightly, by 3 to 4%. There's a lot more research these days which point to coffee having a protective effect on human health. Because it's rich in antioxidants, coffee is said to benefit long-term brain and heart health. A recent study found that older adults who had two or three cups of joe a day had a lower risk of dementia or stroke. Another study revealed two cups a day lowered the risk of dying from liver disease by 66%. But the benefits we can reap from three-in-one mixes are limited because of the many additives in them, especially the unhealthy hydrogenated fats and sugar which can counteract and minimize the health benefits of coffee. Now I've picked up some tips to get a decent cup using instant coffee packets or drip bags. And the trick to a healthier cup is to add my own sugar and milk, or if you're drinking three in ones, you can also pick reduced sugar or low fat options. And while enjoying my cup of instant coffee, I'll remember not to exceed more than four cups of three-in-ones in a day so that I won't get that caffeine crash.